In this presentation, we will be discussing orbital non-infective inflammatory diseases. We will be discussing idiopathic orbital inflammatory disease and orbital myositis. Starting with uh, idiopathic orbital inflammatory disease or IOID. Um, it is also called non-specific orbital inflammation or orbital pseudotumor. Uh, it is an uncommon disorder characterized by non-neoplastic, non-infective, space occupying orbital infiltration with inflammatory features. The process may preferentially involve any or all of the orbital soft tissue. Histopathological analysis reveals pleomorphic inflammatory cellular infiltration followed by reactive fibrosis. Unilateral disease is typical in adults, although the children uh, may, might have bilateral involvement. Intracranial extension is rare. Simultaneous orbital and sinus involvement is also rare and may be a distinct entity. Diagnosis is based on symptoms and signs. Symptoms typically consist of acute and subacute ocular and periocular redness, swelling and pain. Systemic symptoms are common in children. Uh, thyrexia is present in up to 50% of children but is rare in adults. Congestive proptosis. Uh, mild to severe of thermoplegia may occur. Features of optic nerve dysfunctions, particularly if the inflammation involves the posterior orbit. Um, there may be uh, optic disc swelling, choroidal folds if present, may be uh, associated with reduced vision, but optic uh, neuropathy must always be suspected. Uh, the natural history of the inflammatory process is very variable. Spontaneous remission after a few weeks without sequelae can happen. There uh, intermittent uh, episodes of activity, usually with eventual remission. Then uh, severe prolonged inflammation, eventually leading to progressive fibrosis of orbital tissue, resulting in a frozen orbit characterized by ophthalmoplegia, which may be associated with doses and visual impairment caused by optic nerve involvement. Investigations include a uh, CT scan, which shows ill-defined uh, orbital opacifications, uh, which is uh, very distinct from that of the thyroid eye disease, where the orbital tissue is swollen, but tendons, they are spared. But here you can see that uh, there is this uh, ill-defined orbital opacification and loss of definition of contents. Uh, biopsy is generally required. Uh, the same thing is can be observed here in this medial rectus muscle. Uh, biopsy uh, is used to confirm the diagnosis and particularly to rule out neoplasia and systemic inflammatory conditions. A wide range of other investigations may be considered to aid in the exclusion of alternative diagnosis, particularly infection, lymphoma and non-neoplastic inflammatory uh, infiltrative disease, diseases such as sarcoidosis and Wegener's granulomatosis. Um, then comes the uh, treatment part. Uh, observation for relatively mild disease in anticipation of spontaneous remission can be done. NSAIDs alone, for example, ibuprofen are often effective and may be tried in mild disease prior to steroid therapy. Co -pres uh, prescription of a proton pump inhibitor should be considered. Systemic steroids should be administered only after the uh, diagnosis has been confirmed, as they may mask other pathologies such as infection and uh, Wegener's. Oral prednisolone is initially given at a dose of 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram per day, subsequently being tapered and discontinued over a number of weeks depending on clinical response. Further treatment may be needed in the event of recurrence. Uh, Orbital depot steroid uh, injection may be useful in some cases. Radiotherapy may be reconsidered if there has been no improvement after two weeks of adequate steroid therapy. Even low dose treatment of, uh, uh, for example, up to 10 grays may, be, uh, may produce remission, though much higher total doses may be necessary. Uh, supplementary treatments. Uh, or in resistance cases, for example, cytotoxic drugs like methotrexate and azathioprine, calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporin and tetrolimus, and uh, biological blockers may also be used. Uh, surgical resection of the inflammatory focus may be contemplated in highly resistant cases. 
so this is it with the orbital inflammatory disease. Uh, since it is idiopathic, we cannot uh, answer the question of the origin and uh, cause of the disease. Next, we will be discussing orbital myositis, which is an idiopathic non-specific inflammation of one or more of the extraocular muscles and is considered a subtype of uh, IOID. Histology shows a chronic inflammatory cellular infiltrates associated with the muscle fibers. As you can see in the histological slide, it shows a chronic inflammatory cellular infiltrates in relation to the muscle fibers. Um, a diagnosis is based on symptoms and signs. Uh, symptoms include acute pain exacerbated by eye movement and diplopia. Onset is usually in early adulthood. Signs are generally less obvious than IOID. Uh, lid edema, ptosis and chemosis. Pain and diplopia associated with eye movements. Uh, other than that, there is a vascular injection over the involved muscles. Uh, in chronic cases, fibrosis of the affected muscles may occur with permanent restrictive myopathy. Uh, course of the disease include acute non-recurrent involvement that resolves spontaneously within six weeks. Chronic disease characterized by either a single episode persistent uh, uh, for longer than two months, uh, often for years, or recurrent attacks. Now, investigations. Uh, include uh, primarily uh, of MRI and CT which shows enlargement of the affected muscles as it can be seen here in the right eye. Uh, you can see enlargement of the medial rectus on the CT scan uh, here and With or without involvement of the tendons of insertion, this is uh, in contrast to uh, thyroid eye related uh, muscle enlargement in which the tendon is always spared. Additional investigations may be required in some cases. Now, treatment uh, is aimed at relieved, uh, relieving discomfort and dysfunction, uh, shortening the course and preventing recurrences. NSAIDs may be adequate in mild disease, but systemic steroids are generally required and usually produce dramatic improvement. Although recurrence is seen in 50%, radiotherapy is also effective, particularly in limiting recurrences. So thank you all for listening to the lecture. Uh, if you like the lecture, please click on the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel.